Hello YouTube, Tom D here. Recently did a takedown of a Ruger Mark II pistol. Today we're going to take a look at a Mark I. First they came out in 1949 with the standard pistol. They followed that up shortly after in about 1951 with the Mark I. You can see that clearly marked on the gun. That's how you can tell the difference. Otherwise they're pretty much looking the same. There's no scallop at the back. There's no bolt stop. Same magazine release at the bottom. When they came out with the Mark 1s, they were target models is what they were after. So they gave you the adjustable sights on it and then various barrel lengths. This gun is a 6 and 7 eighths Ruger Mark 1 target. It's got a Ruger branded muzzle brake on the end. And if you take a look at that, you can see that on there. Sturm Ruger. I don't know if this one came from the factory that way. You can see it's just pinned on. And they sold these as aftermarkets and then they also sold some direct from the factory. So here we go with the grips already removed. Let's go ahead and drop the magazine. Let's cock it. Release the, pull the trigger, release the pressure on the mainspring. Make a nice scallop tool like this or something plastic. Get it up in there. This one is an easy one. Many are not. If not, take a punch and push down. I found that on the Ruger Mark 1s, this particular one, the barrel is loose, ready to come off. You can go ahead and remove it, pull forward with the hammer in the up position. If yours is not and you want to get that bolt out first, you will have to manipulate the trigger to get the hammer loose so that you can pull the bolt out. You can see that on my Mark II video. With that done, let's go ahead and punch out pins. We're going to start with our magazine release and we're going to push that down using my little Glock tool here. It's about the right size. Get that one through and then the spring also off. Dump all that out. Just keep these things in piles together. So when we go back and put it back together, I'll show you how to do it. Next let's take the hammer group out. That pin can go out from either direction. I prefer to use nylon or plastic when I can. I'm going to push that one all the way through. There's our pin. And I'll pull that out and just let everything fall out. Okay. Safety often gets in there because it's got spring loaded. I'll show you what that was when we go back and put it back together. Make sure that everything's out of there. The trigger uh, Plunger and spring will also often come out with it. So let's keep that together. There we go. That's what I was looking for. A little spring to go with the safety detent. Okay. Next, let's get our trigger group out of here. And that's got a C-clip up in there. And it's a pain in the backside to get out. Best thing I've found is rotate the C-clip so that it's facing forward and then use two pieces of metal to push it forward off of the pin. It's the easiest way I can find to do it. Let's try that. Okay, got that loose. Don't do that if you're not ready for the truggable of getting it out of there. There's the little pin. And after that, we can then take and push our well, let's find something the right diameter. Gently push that through and we'll let all that fall out. And there we go. There's the components of that. We'll put it over here. There's that crazy little C-clip that we were trying to get off of that groove in the pin. Pin goes in from the left to the right. That smaller side stops it at the frame. Set that aside. Now we've got our sear. And for that, let's get the sear out first. And we're just going to punch that through, get the right size here. This clock tool seems to work about the best on these, even though it is metal. Uh, just be very careful. We'll let that dump out, sear, spring, pin. And then let's go ahead and need an even smaller punch to get the cross pin out that traps the sear spring. And once we've done that, we've got a completely stripped frame. Next you have our magazine. It is welded together. The base plate does not come off. So the way you get this apart is you take a dowel or an object. I'm going to take a brass rod here and I'm going to compress 
the spring down to the point where I can pull the follower out of the opening in the magazine body. There we go. Try not to let everything fly on you. And there we go. And that's the follower that I was working to get out and catches in the magazine body groove. Next, we have our bolt. First thing is the recoil spring. Simply pull down on that and then it'll come out. Maybe a little gummy on yours and hard to get. Next is the firing pin. If you compress that towards the front of the pin, sometimes the stop pin will just fall out. If not, push it forward. Use a soft dowel to push it through. Dump that out in your hand and you get your firing pin and your rebound spring. Last thing on the bolt is the ejector. To get that out, I've got a little tool here that I bought, gunsmither tools. The end of it has a wire, because here's what you want to do. You want to take a, a stiff, thin object, put it in there, push the plunger down so that it'll let that ejector come out and let gravity take its course. If it's not too gummy, gravity will take over. And sometimes a second jab will help and eventually it comes out. There, got it ready to go, came loose. That little tail is indenting into the bolt as so you've got to release the pressure so it'll come out. That's the process. Let's take this out. And there's the spring and plunger that was in there. Now we have a completely stripped bolt. Let's keep all that together. And there you have all the components. We've got our grips, we've got our trigger group, we've got our hammer group, we've got our sear group, we've got our bolt group, of course the barrel, mainspring and housing, we've got our magazine release set, we've got our magazine, and the empty frame. So let's get this set aside and we'll put it all back together. So let's get our bolt put back together and out of the way. We're going to take our ejector spring and plunger, put that together, slide that into the end. The ejector goes, keeping the flat side towards the bolt, and put that flush. Your ejector is all you need to push this in. Simply push in with the ejector until you feel the ejector go down and you know it's seated. Flip that around. Let's take our rebound spring. This one only goes on one way and paddle. Put that face down into the groove in the front of the channel there. Your firing pin sets on top of that and that little bump out catches onto the spring. You know you've got it right when you got a little bit of tension. Take your firing pin stop, line up the holes you can see through there. Line up until it goes in. It just slips in usually by itself. You shouldn't need any pressure. A little tension on the firing pin. Let's take our recoil spring, set it in place. Pull down on that until it catches. Let's set the bolt aside. Next let's get our magazine together. This particular spring is open on that end, closed on that end, and that grabs the follower. Let's slide that into the magazine body. And grab this brass rod I used before to compress it. Try not to make a projectile out of it. Take our follower button there, put it in the lower part until it catches. Magazine's complete. Next, let's put our magazine release in. The magazine spring goes in first. The feet go up, flat side towards the front of the gun. And that goes on the first pin. I like to start the first pin so I have a target to shoot for. Locking tweezers help a lot to keep track of that. You just have to keep an eye on that. Tilt that in until you find the pin and push it through the spring. There we go. This one's a little loose. Keep an eye it doesn't fall out on you. The next one is where the work comes in. So this little tab here of the spring has to catch. There's your release. It has to catch on that front part. You'll you see two little notches probably on yours where it's been riding. And essentially I have to get this in, push it forward on that spring, keeping it from clicking off, and line up the holes and drop the pin in all at once. A little tricky to do on camera. There we go. I was able to get that on only about the second try. 
Next, let's put in our sear group. We'll take the thinner pin and put that into the hole for the cross pin, which is the lower one there. Next, the sear itself. Let's start the pin. We'll start it in from the left side of the frame. Get that in just far enough so that we can slip the spring on there. I have to flip it around to do mine because I'm right-handed. Long tail down, short tail up, flat to the back of the gun, and you've got to get that tail tucked in behind that lower pin between that and the wall. I ended up using needle nose. It was a little simpler to manipulate. And then we're going to back that pin back off until it's up against the wall so that we have room to get our sear in. Let's keep that spring on there. I'm going to flip this around to do the sear. With the sear, it's also easier with the needle nose. I don't touch the critical face of that, and I can get that right in there with more control. Put it in, line it to the pin, push the pin through, and you know you've got it done when you can put forward pressure on the sear and have spring tension. It means you got both sides of that spring trapped correctly. Next, let's get our trigger group in. So for that, We'll start by assembling our trigger and bar. Drop that in. Align the holes. Push the pin through with that smaller side first so that it, all the way through until it catches on the right side of the frame. And it goes so far. And then that C-clip, let me show you a little trick I learned. I'm sure there's a tool for it somewhere, but I split the end of a dowel rod to hold it on, and I can use that to get it on top of the pin, right over the detent. I can only go so far with this, but I can at least line it up there, get that down in there, and then I can use another object and punch it the rest of the way down. There we go. And it's resting on the pin. Hopefully you can see that. Next, let's take the hammer group. We're going to take the spring and detent of the safety. Put that in there and because it wants to fall out I'm actually going to manipulate the frame instead of the safety and you want to put it through the hole put that detent in you see that and then rotate the firing pin to trap it. I'm going to flip all this over and I'm going to pull that sear forward use a little dowel if you have to and that's the safety will trap the sear. You know you got it right when you can line up those holes and then start your pin. I'll show you in a second how that trapped it. Okay. Keep your safety up against the wall. It keeps trying to pop out because of that spring. Get your pin flush. It's holding the sear in place. Okay, with the safety firmly up against the wall, the pin started, but out of the way. Let's get our trigger spring, drop that in the top of the trigger. And then we'll get our plunger and drop that in the top of the spring. Start to let that bar down. Let's take our hammer, bushing on the right hand side. There's the orientation. Put that into the bar. And we're going to bring that down, hanging the hammer strut so that it catches into the open part of the frame, doesn't get caught on any pins. And we're going to push that down in place until we can get the pin to slip through that opening, the hole in the hammer. There we go. You know that's in place when it's flush on both sides. And at that point, everything is together. Let's get our pieces back in. And we're essentially ready for the reverse of a fill strip. So making sure our hammer is down, let's take the barrel, put it on the lug. This one is loose. Slide it back up against. Take the bolt. As long as your hammer's down, the bolt will slip right in. Take our mainspring housing, the mainspring in it. Feed it up through there. Like I said, this one is easy. You don't need force. If you do, try a tool like this to push and get it locked into place. Sometimes a wooden dowel even will do it. And then check to make sure your strut's free of the pin. If it's not, tilt down, pull the trigger to get it free, then get it hanging backwards while you lower the mainspring. And you'll know you got it right when you feel spring tension, and then you basically close it like a pocket knife. 
And if you felt that tension, you know you caught the strut correctly on the main spring. You can test it. Everything's working. Get our magazine back in, ready to reinstall the grips and finish this one up. And there you have it, Ruger Mark I, disassembled, reassembled. Hope this helps you with your Ruger pistol. Take a look, I've got a Mark II disassembly, reassembly out there as well. Stay tuned for more videos, subscribe to keep up with me. Drop me a comment below, love the thumbs up. Have a great day.